All right, thank you uh, again. And so today will be um, our third session on on uh, birds. In particular, we are just trying to to celebrate the uh, the raptors that are cut, that are already here, but they'll be going back in um, uh, mid of February up until April. They'll be heading back up north, um, culminating in the Raptor Watch event normally on the second weekend of um, of March. And that's basically based on historical data that has shown that it peaks the migration um, of birds that are going back, the number of birds that are going back peaks in uh, in March, um, around middle of March itself. This uh, Nature Hero Talks is sponsored by, uh, supported by uh, Negri uh, Malacca branch. And basically, uh, we are Voice for Nature, and um, we would like to invite all of you to be part of this uh, Voice for Nature. Membership is only 80 ringgit for family membership uh, per year. It's uh, less than a meal, uh, basically, for a family meal if you're eating outside. And uh, please do join us. Basically, uh, when you become a member... Oops. Still can you hear me? How come I got this? Uh... Okay. So... Uh, when you become a member, you become one voice for nature, and that helps us when we go and talk to, uh, we are actually part of the government's environmental um, impact assessment group. Uh, when there are big projects, we actually get invited to sit on that particular committee, and we go with a strong voice if we have a, a bigger membership. Okay. Uh, Harris, you're able to help to admit the uh, members. Harris, thank you. And yes, yes. thanks. Right now, we are focusing on delivering our, our uh, talks and other activities relating to, relating to nature on our ecopartners.online. And many benefits. Uh, basically, you only need to, to register with the app one time. And as you can see, uh, now to attend the talk is just a matter of a click of a button. All right. And there are many other activities which we actually give points. And in the future, you can convert these points to products or services. Okay, so for the month of January, months of January to March, we have five talks lined up. Uh, today we'll be talking about raptors, and twentieth of February we are going to um, Johor, Malacca, and the Greek Simbalan to learn what are the birds that that are available there. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to mute this person. Okay, thank you for muting yourself. Okay, so uh, Johor uh, Negri Malacca will be the next talk. And then on the 6th of March, we'll be heading to Fraser's Hill, Selangor and Penang to learn about what are the common birds that are available there, right? These are our uh, online presence. If you don't mind, take out your phone. And um, if you haven't liked our Facebook page on the left hand side, please do so. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. All our talks are recorded and we actually put them on YouTube for future references. All right. Today, our speaker is Mr. Lim Kim Chai. We're very grateful for him to, to make this effort. Um, he's well known, very well known within the um, the raptor uh, community, raptor group. And um, let me just introduce you to him. Okay, sorry, I have to read this out. So he started the uh, MNS uh, Mar uh, Perak branch bird group and was a coordinator for many years before he retired as a lab technician in 1991 and went to live in Australia. 98, he returned to work uh, with MNS HQ as, as the ornitholog ornithological officer and park manager based in the MNS Bow Center in Cameron Highlands. He left um, MNS in 2000 and 
you can see this the highlights of his short uh, time there, success uh, as a successful proposal for Kinta Nature Park in Batu Gaja, Raptor Watch Creek at Tanjung Ton, and his field work during the early years of the Hornbill, Hornbill project in uh, Bulum Temango. Uh, this is quite uh, famous, I think it's still going on. He did freelance consultancy work on AV fauna and biodiversity surveys and volunteered with the ARRCN. He lives, he now lives in, tai, in Taiping with uh, Si Yen, his partner, and able assistant during many uh, MNS trips and consultancy work. So with that, um, we'd like to welcome Lim Kim, Lim Kim Chai. Thank you very much for making your time. So you uh, may share your slides, please. Thank you. If there are any questions, uh, kindly uh, do so inside the chat box and we do that at the end of the program. Thank you very much. Okay, over to you. Right, uh, thanks uh, Ruti for that uh, introduction and also to Nagri and Malacca MNS branch for inviting me to give this talk. Uh, which I am actually uh, presenting on behalf of the Raptor Study Group of uh, MNS. Um, why the timing for the talk? Uh, as uh, Vuti mentioned, uh, now is the time for the birds and uh, raptors to go back north during uh, spring migration, which has, has already like you know started uh, now. And, uh, and uh, the uh, peak will be around March for the raptors. Uh, just to say that this talk will be in uh, basically in uh, in uh, three uh, parts. The first part will be a brief introduction to raptors and the raptor species that we can see in Malaysia. And uh, part two will be about the raptors of uh, Tanjung Tuan. And the last, and the last but not least part will be about uh, raptor conservation in Malaysia. Okay, what are raptors? Well, I think all of us are. All of us are aware of what raptors are, and uh, as soon as we see a raptor, we can uh, we can we can recognize that it is a raptor. Raptors are birds of prey that uh, hunt and uh, prey on uh, various kinds of wildlife. Uh, they flying raptors include uh, birds like eagles, uh, hawks. Falcons and also uh, birds like vultures. Although vultures do not actually hunt uh, wildlife, they do eat uh, the uh, the uh, the the birds and the wildlife that are that are already dead. They are scavengers, and we also have raptors that uh, are active during the night, which are the owls. For today, we will just uh, we will just talk about the diurnal raptors that uh, can be found in uh, Malaysia. Okay, um, raptors are also known as birds of prey, and uh, and they and they uh, hunt. Uh, and they hunt and kill other animals, uh, particularly the higher vertebrates. Uh, diurnal raptors uh, worldwide, they consist of about 300 species, and we have about 200 species of uh, raptors throughout the world. And their position in the uh, ecosystem is that they are at the top of the food chain, and they are ind indicator birds, uh, meaning that uh, if, uh, if an ecosystem is uh, healthy, uh, 
uh, most probably you'll be able to find raptors there. And uh, if you, uh, by saying umbrella species, meaning if you uh, protect raptors, you protect all the other animals that are in the same ecosystem where the, uh, where the, where the bird is. <clears throat> Okay, what makes a raptor? For one, they they are very they 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 have evolved to be uh, to be very skilled at uh, flying and uh, chasing after prey, and uh, they are very they have uh, well developed a uh, well developed vision that uh, help them to locate prey when they are flying high in the sky. And uh, they are equipped with very strong legs with a sharp talons that they can that they use to grasp and uh, kill their their prey. And their hook bill, which is a very which is a very well known uh, characteristic of a raptor, is not used to uh, is not mainly used to kill pr uh, prey, but to help it to tear the flesh of uh, the birds that they have, uh, that they have uh, got. Okay, uh, raptors are found in all the continents of the world. And if you look at the uh, map, the distribution, you can see that uh, Asia Asia has the most number of raptor, of uh, diurnal raptor species, 90. And uh, why is that so? It's because uh, Asia covers a wide range of, uh, a wide range of uh, ecosystem uh, with uh, high biodiversity, which is, uh, which makes, uh, you know, which gives uh, a lot of uh, prey for raptors. And also uh, quite important, uh, there are many islands in uh, Asia with endemic raptors, such as you know, in the uh, Philippines, you have the uh, Philippine eagle. In uh, Java Island, you have the Javan hawk eagle. So these are the two uh, reasons why Asia has the most number of raptor species in the world. What about in uh, Malaysia? We have uh, so far recorded uh, 46 species in uh, Malaysia. And these uh, consist of three uh, families. The uh, Pendionidae, which uh, only one uh, species, Osprey. And then the, you have the scp 3 day the biggest uh, group. Uh, they include the buzzards, honey buzzard, pet, pet hawks, kites, fish eagles, uh, vultures too, harriers and so on. And then the last uh, family is the falconidae, the falcons, the small uh, falconess, hobby, and castro. Why does Malaysia has a relatively uh, high raptor diversity uh, compared to other countries? Uh, one of the reasons, of course, is that Malaysia being in the tropics, uh, there's a high biodiversity uh, that includes a high diversity of raptors too. And uh, quite also important is that uh, Malaysia is uh, located on the uh, confluence of uh, three migration flyways. You have the... You have the east... Uh, you have the uh, Eastern Inland uh, Flyway here. Hey. Yes, tell me. And then you have the uh, Coastal Pacific uh, Flyway and then the Oceanic Flyway. Uh, the Oceanic Flyway, of course, goes into Borneo and uh, spreads out to the rest of uh, Indonesia. So these are, these are the two reasons why uh, we have such a high diversity of uh, raptors, 46. Eh?
Uh, I'm sure members of uh, Negri and uh, Malacca know this place, Tanjung Tuan. So in this uh, part, I'm going to talk a bit about the raptors that can be seen in uh, Tanjung Tuan and uh, give a little bit of a uh, uh, little bit of uh, idea of how to identify the various uh, migrant raptors that uh, uh, land in uh, Tanjung Tuan. Uh, Tanjung Tuan, of course, is a very important uh, uh, regional site for spring migration. Uh, and it is located at the uh, narrowest part of the uh, Straits of Malacca, uh, being only about 38 uh, kilometers from uh, Sumatra. Uh, and uh, if you look at this view, you can see that across from Tanjung Tuan, there's only open sea, there's no land, no, no islands. So uh, raptors that cross over from uh, Pulau Lupat, which is this island uh, off the east coast of uh, Sumatra. Once they, once they cross, they cannot uh, turn back. They will have to just continue on or they can't make it. They will just uh, fall into the sea. So uh, Tanjung Kwan is very important for spring migration. <clears throat> Uh, after study group and uh, BCC, B, BCC have been uh, doing raptor counts at Tanjung Tuan uh, since, through, since the year 2000. And uh, usually the count starts in uh, February, in uh, late February and uh, continues continue on until April. This is the peak time when all the uh, raptors will make, make the uh, make the uh, uh, sea crossing to Tanjung Tuan. So far, uh, if, I, if I'm not uh, mistaken, uh, 14 migratory raptors have been, uh, have been uh, seen there. And the highest uh, count uh, for one season, for one year, all the various raptors is uh, 73,000 raptors. That's a very high, uh, the highest count for oriental honey buzzard in uh, uh, Asia. And this, uh, and here you can see some of our uh, 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 the next few slides I'll be introducing the common uh, migrant that uh, one can see in uh, Tanjung Tuan. Uh, the, ident the identification of uh, raptors is very much flight profile because when you are at uh, Tanjung Tuan, all you see is the birds from below. You can you can only see their shape unless and they come low enough and you can and see some few um, uh, uh, marks. Uh, it? And uh, it's a bird that, that has a that has a broad wings with a long tail, and uh, for the male. Uh, The way to okay. The way to uh, uh, the male is the uh, the trailing edge. I mean, this is called the trailing edge, and this is called the beating edge. The trailing edge has uh, brought um, and and my has got this two black bands separated by a, a flew into the tree near the lighthouse and uh, took a rest here. So the male 
you can see the face is gray and the eye is red. So this is the male. So the way of uh, identifying the uh, oriental honey buzzard. <clears throat> The female, uh, the trailing edge is not so distinct, as you can see here. It's just barely a narrow band of uh, black. And the same thing too with the uh, tail. The black bands are not as broad as in the male. And uh, if you look carefully, uh, the female has got a, a pale eye and the face is, doesn't have that gray, uh, gray, gray on the sides. Uh, all, all, all these details, uh, you will need to use a uh, uh, binoculars to, in order to be able to, to uh, see them. But as I said before, the profile of the uh, OHP is uh, quite distinctive, very broad wings, broad tail, broad and long tail, and it's got uh, the fingers the uh, primary feathers one two three four five six uh, sometimes we see the juveniles which are the young birds and the juvenile you can tell uh, the tail markings are not so clear yeah and there's uh, very little marking on the uh, feeling edge and the feel the, the best feel mark is the uh, fingers the tips of the wings are, are dark. And this is also a juvenile. And quite often, the, the bird is quite uh, quite light in color, quite, quite pale in color. <clears throat> All right, we'll go to the next one. Uh, the next common uh, raptor is a black bazaar. Very distinctively, uh, 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 raptor with very distinctive uh, color uh, pattern, black and white, with uh, not barrings on the on the underside. And if you see it perch, uh, uh, it's got this very distinctive. Uh, uh, usually, they will come over in flocks, maybe sometimes up to uh, one hundred or even more and uh, so, uh, in uh, in uh, Tanjung Tuan uh, we have counted uh, the maximum per season is 6,400. I forgot to mention that for the oriental honey buzzard the maximum count was about 63,700 a lot Uh, then we come to these uh, small hawks, which are called the aspeters, meaning uh, aspeters are uh, uh, small hawks, which is why they are called a uh, uh, sparrow hawks. So Chinese sparrow hawk also distinctive uh, plumage. If you can see them, uh, they also fly over in flocks. And if you have a if you have a good view, they are quite easily recognized by the black wing tips on the overall uh, very white, very pale body. So and then the, the other the other field mark, the uh, flight profile, the wing tip is very pointed. So pointed wing tip, uh, black on the on the. Uh, again, this is the male with a red eye, female yellow eye. So that's the Chinese uh, sparrow. Hawk. Another uh, sparrow hawk is the Japanese uh, sparrow hawk. Uh, they are quite different in in behavior. They don't. Uh, they don't generally uh, fly over in flocks. Uh, in the, 
individual birds or maybe two, two, two or three of them together and they don't uh, fly, fly as high, uh, quite often they just fly just over the treetops. Um, the flight profile, I would say the best way to, uh, to identify them is the projecting uh, fingers. If you look at the uh, wing shape, it's generally all the, the same uh, length, except when it comes to the uh, uh, quite, uh, quite far out from the other flight feathers, which are all about the same length. And uh, most most of the uh, barings and are generally brown, but they would they would also have the same uh, flight profile as the adults. Uh, the male has got this uh, orange wash on the on the breast, whereas the female one is uh, sparrow hawk. Uh, seen at Tanjung is the grey face buzzard. Uh, they fly about in uh, small flocks, numbering maybe about 10, 12. They don't uh, fly around uh, so much because they are very strong. Uh, they are very uh, strong flight, and uh, usually you see them. Uh, they come over in a in a group quite fast, and they just fly and go inland uh, straight away instead of tumbling around the lighthouse. Their flight, their flight uh, profile is quite distinctive. Uh, narrow and long wings, quite pointed and long tail. Uh, and if you see them, uh, if, you, if you see them well enough, uh, you, Kim Chai, you can, can see you hear the, me? Uh, yes. Could you uh, maybe switch off your video because uh, it's uh, lagging a lot coming from your side? Switch off my video. Yes, at the bottom uh, top uh, bottom left, there's you got a microphone and the speak and the video, right? You just switch it off. Top. Okay. All right. Okay. Then it's probably the bandwidth is probably better. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Continue. Okay. Okay, I'm uh, still the uh, Griffiths buzzer, right? Okay, so I said the Griffiths buzzer has a distinctive uh, profile with a narrow and uh, pointed wings, long tail. And if you see it well enough, uh, the markings are. Uh, black uh, bands inter interspersed with uh, white bands is very distinctive, right? Now we come to some uncommon uh, Migratory raptors that uh, occasionally we see one or two every 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 year, or maybe not every year, but uh, when when we do see them, we see a few, not more than uh, five or six. Uh, the osprey, uh, very distinctive again because it's got this very broad, very long, and uh, thin wings pointed. Pointed thin wings with a with a with a short tail, and generally white underneath. <clears throat> Another uncommon uh, migrant uh, raptor is the uh, peregrine falcon. This is the uh, migratory one. We also have the resident. Uh, a peregrine a falcon, but this is the one migrates here 
and uh, every year we do get uh, one, one or two uh, at Tanyong Kwan. Uh, this is a big help. Uh, thin, uh, pointed wings, longish tail, and generally white underneath with a black mask. And this is uh, apparently the fastest bird in the world. And, uh, 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 it's a solitary migrant. You don't get them in flocks. They, they migrate uh, singly. Uh, uh, and the uncommon migrant, the Eastern Marsh Harrier, uh, this alternating with the glides on parallel sided wings held in a shallow V. So their, their flight profile, the way that they hold their wings and the way that they fly is a, is a good uh, characteristic to, ID, to identify uh, 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 the Harriers. Male of the Eastern Marsh is very distinctive. Generally white body with a dark or black head and wings with a, a black outer primaries. Female is a Generally brown, uh, black wing tips with bars, and uh, juvenile pale head and uh, pale panels on the underside of the the inner parts. Look at um, at her <clears throat> Another uh, un uncommon. Uh, a migrant raptor, the black kite, uh, easily easily identified by the uh, uh, more or less uh, fork tail. Like this, like this shape. And with the uh, white panels on the wing and the, the brown underside of the body with Is a black kite. Then raptors of Tanjung Kwan. Uh, Tanjung Kwan because it has a uh, forest as well as a uh, resident raptor we have here in uh, Malaysia. Uh, easily recognize the adult from the by the uh, combination of black flight feathers and clean white body, and also very distinctive wedge shaped tail. In all plumages, even the young, the immature has got that pointed tail. This is the immature, the young one. Uh, with his, uh, he's got the uh, body is uh, is a uh, dirty, dirty white, and there's a paneling on the otherwise dark wings. So, uh, white belly seagull quite often seen uh, flying around the lighthouse. Another very common uh, resident there is the Brahmini kite. Uh, again, distinctive, uh, generally chocolate wings and the belly, but white breast and head. Distinctive, and the way that it, that it holds its uh, wings, it's, it's got this bend on the wings. When it flies, uh, it, the, the flight profile is very distinctive. It's got this bend at the, uh, at the wrist of the wings. 
Uh, there's a there's a perch uh, juvenile you can see is uh, chestnut, and the head and breast is generally white. The young is uh, is a uh, is a pale brown on the underside on the and on the head, and uh, darker on the upper parts. Ramnikite is. Uh, Quite often uh, can be confused with the brown, with the black kite. Uh, crested serpent eagle quite often seen in uh, Tanjung Tuan too. Uh, this is a very common uh, raptor. I think uh, many of us have seen the uh, crested serpent eagle uh, in flight. Very distinctive. It's got this very broad uh, mid band on the wings going all the way from the primaries right down to the secondaries. And the tail has got, uh, uh, has got a broad white band too. And uh, it, when it flies uh, quite often, you can hear its distinctive ringing call, which can be heard from quite uh, a distance. Uh, a perch bird uh, can be easily uh, identified by this yellow uh, sphere. Here is the area be uh, between the eye and the bill. It's got this yellow bare skin around the head. And in the adult, the head has got this uh, slight crest which can be raised or lowered like in this uh, young bird, the crest is raised. Young bird is quite different from the adult, uh, more spots and a lot of white on the uh, head and on the crest. So that's the uh, crested serpent eagle. <clears throat> uh, another common uh, resident raptor at Tanyong Tuan is the changeable hawk eagle. Quite often see, see flying around. Uh, why name changeable? Not because it can change, uh like you know instantly but uh, it's, it comes in two it comes in two forms uh one is the uh one is the pale form one is the pale form here and the other one is a dark form in the uh pale form uh the underside is white and with this it is uh, and heavily uh, streaked brown and above is uh, brownish, it's got a long tail. Whereas the uh, dark form is uh, brownish black all over. Uh, the changeable hawk eagle has got a very distinctive flight profile. It's got these very broad wings with and uh, which is knit in at the body. When I say it's knit in, uh, Goes here and then goes it goes in here. This is what I mean by when I say it's nip in. So this uh, wing shape plus the tail, uh, very distinctive for changeable hawk eagle, even even for the dark dark moth. Uh, and uh, another field mark is the number of uh, fingers. It's uh, got uh, seven fingers. Huh? Three, four, five, six, seven, uh, as opposed to the one six fingers for the oriental honey buzzard. Uh, and uh, very typical of the hawk eagles, they have very long legs, which is feathered all the way. So, for hawk eagles and for the changeable hawk eagle, this is another field mark. If you can see the bird perch. Uh, with these uh, long legs, feathers all the way to the to the foot. Uh, small the crested goshawk, 
uh, uh, so because it's got this visible crest, which 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 can be put this white path on the this white path here, which I may not be able to be seen very clearly in the photo, but it's got this white path, which are the uh, undertail covered. Uh, quite often when they fly, this this these two white paths are visible as uh, two um, two uh, puff of uh, white feathers. So that's the crested goshawk. <clears throat> uh, I'd, I'd like to just uh, show a few slides about the threatened resident raptors that we have in Malaysia. Uh, we have two uh, raptors which uh, are vulnerable according to the IUCN status. Uh, one is the Wallace's hawk eagle. And the other one is this uh, Kinabalu serpent eagle, which looks like our ordinary uh, crested uh, serpent eagle, except that it's darker, it's very black here. And this, uh, e this eagle is only uh, found in the mountains of uh, North Borneo, uh, particularly around the uh, Kinabalu range in uh, Sabah. Wallace's hawk eagle is a raptor that is, uh, that is uh, commonly seen in uh, Pitsuam. So uh, they're very, uh, they are, they are highly uh, at risk from from extinction. Uh, the other another three other threatened raptors uh, near threatened uh, status according to uh, IUCN. Lesser fish eagle and the grey-headed fish eagle, which, uh, as the name suggests, are uh, uh, raptors that feed on fish and they require large rivers and uh, um, lakes and wetlands to survive. And this uh, this one is the uh, white-fronted falconet, also a raptor that is uh, endemic endemic to uh, Borneo, particularly in uh, Sabah. Uh, for those who are not uh, familiar, endemic meaning uh, only found in that particular place, anywhere else in the world. So uh, another raptor like the uh, Kinabalu uh, serpent eagle, endemic, and both highly at risk from extinction. So, uh, we have at least uh, <clears throat> we have at least 15 uh, resident uh, raptors that are they are dependent on forests or woodlands. This include uh, raptors like uh, mountain mountain hawk eagle here, which is only found in one place in, uh, in, uh, in Malaysia, only on Langkawi Island in the mountains. And the hawk eagles, such as uh, changeable hawk eagle, rice hawk eagle, black eagle also uh, restricted to mountainous areas. Uh, bat hawk, another forest uh, dependent raptor. The resident form of the peregrine uh, falcon, which is, uh, very dependent on limestone hills and limestone hill forests, uh, at risk from uh, quarrying. And the resident form of the uh, resident form of the honey buzzard, the crested honey buzzard, honey buzzard, crested because uh, as opposed to the oriental honey buzzard, which doesn't have a crest, the resident form has a small crest. Another falconer that is dependent on forest, black-type falconer, 
and Rufus Bellet Eagle. <clears throat> so uh, the the boom in the uh, oil palm industry and, and the modernization of uh, rice planting have re resulted in a rapid increase in the volume and a variety of uh, pesticides that are used to control pests such as rats. Uh, we all know that the uh, pesticide bioaccumulation in uh, raptors and is a uh, consequent result of uh, reproductive uh, failure. Uh, the uh, pesticide caused the thinning of uh, egg, of uh, eggshells, and uh, uh, quite often when the bird sits on the egg, the, the egg just breaks. So that was uh, that was uh, DDT in the uh, early 1960s. Yeah? So uh, pesticides uh, can cause uh, reproductive failure as well as death in birds that have uh, that have uh, you know consume uh, rodents which have uh, ingested uh, these pesticides. Raptors, because, uh, the, because of their hunting uh, uh, techniques, they are very, uh, they are very susceptible to uh, And uh, if you see in this uh, photo, quite often uh, a lot of uh, oil palm uh, uh, next, uh, just next to forests, and uh, it's not hard to believe that uh, quite uh, many of the raptors that live in the forests uh, come over to the oil palm to to a hunt. And uh, for the Inside the uh, use in the rice fields, we have uh, many raptors that forage in uh, forage on agricultural lands. Uh, we have uh, three uh, three eagles which are which have which are threatened. Uh, uh, coming coming to spend winter in uh, Malaysia. We have the greater spotted eagle, the imperial eagle, and the uh, step eagle. So these eagles uh, spend a lot of their winter time uh, in the Besides the three uh, eagles, uh, other other migratory raptors also feed in uh, paddy fields, such as black kites here, uh, common kestrel, uh, the harriers, eastern marsh harrier, and the pied harrier. All these uh, migratory raptors uh, spend a lot of time uh, feeding on. Uh, feeding on the prey that they find in the paddy fields. Uh, we also have our resident uh, primary kite and the black wing kite also uh, foraging in uh, paddy land in uh, agricultural area in uh, oil palm estates, uh, especially newly planted oil palm estates. What about uh, persecution from uh, humans? Do uh, do our raptors in uh, Malaysia face uh, persecution from? Well, in Peninsular Malaysia, uh, hunting and trapping of raptors is not so widespread, except for the occasional um, raptor that are you know they are in uh, in uh, wildlife parks or animal exhibits. But uh, <clears throat> but in uh, Borneo, 
uh, raptors are still hunted uh, because in Borneo, um, uh, before they used to uh, just use you know, traditional methods. Now with the advent of uh, of uh, guns, uh, the, the uh, hunting of uh, raptors for trophy as well as uh, for uh, sport may be increasing. Uh, and also, although there are laws governing uh, gun ownership, uh, because of the uh, remote areas, enforcement is difficult. And, uh, in, uh, and, and also enforcement is uh, complicated by cultural and uh, economic factors. Um, there, there, there are records of uh, of uh, changeable hog eagle and uh, oriental honey buzzard and crested goshawk being kept as pets in uh, Borneo. And also, I've uh, uh, seen like this uh, Brahmini kite, uh, which are kept, uh, kept, as, uh, kept as pet, maybe waiting for, for somebody to buy it. So uh, that, that is the human persecution uh, aspect of uh, the threat of raptors. <clears throat> So why is it important to conserve raptors? As, uh, as, as can be seen on the slide, excuse me. As, as, as also mentioned uh, earlier, there are indicators of the richness and, and the stability of the ecosystem. Uh, raptors being at the top of the food chain, they control the uh, large prey base they control the numbers of uh, rodents, the numbers of snakes, numbers of uh, insects, numbers of birds, which, which uh, if not uh, managed, not controlled, uh, can increase in uh, proportions that may impact on agriculture, on health, and, uh, and eventually affect humans too. And, uh, there are also indicators of biodiversity. Uh, an area which has a high, den high density and high di uh, diversity of raptors indicate that, uh, that there is enough uh, prey base, there is enough uh, diversity in that area, uh, which is why the raptors there can survive. And, uh, and the last, and the last uh, thing, uh, Raptors are uh, indicators of a healthy environment. As I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the case of DDT, this was the first, uh, the first uh, time that uh, uh, the scientists were made aware of the effect of uh, DDT on raptors when uh, the breeding population of peregrine falcon in the US began to, began to uh, fall. And they investigated and they found out that it was uh, because of DDT. So uh, they, they are indicators of the uh, contamination of uh, chemical pollutant, uh, pollutants in, in, our, in our environment. Uh, if you see the volumes, uh, it, there is a uh, it's, it's a sure sign that you know that there's you know something going on you know uh, too much uh, too much uh, pesticides which are not only killing the uh, pests that uh, feed the raptors but also killing the raptors themselves. So in that in that sense, they they tell us whether the environment is being poisoned or not. <clears throat> So, what other reasons for uh, protecting raptors? The cultural reasons, uh, falconry. Falconry has 
has long been used by nomadic people since uh, since you know since historical time and although now it's not uh, often used and uh, maybe used as you know uh, as a as a traditional uh, or tra for traditional reasons but still it is important and if i'm not wrong uh, falconry is recognized uh, as a cultural heritage by the by the united nations and of course uh, uh, raptors are featured in many uh, cultures, not only uh, tribal people, but also uh, in uh, everyday in in uh, everyday life. They are used in uh, logos and symbols. Uh, for example, well-known uh, bald eagle is the uh, is the national bird. Uh, I think is the national bird of the uh, of the U.S. and is also uh, used in uh, things like. Uh, Currency, and as a, uh, as like, uh, what do you call it, a chop, and uh, even to this day, uh, there are many legends and uh, stories about raptors, and we use uh, we use uh, raptor names in our every in our everyday life. You know, like we say, somebody is eagle eyed, or you know, uh, hawk eye, yeah. So for cultural, there are many cultural reasons why raptors should be uh, should be conserved. <laughs> so uh, are raptors being uh, are raptors being uh, adequately um, protected in uh, Malaysia? We have uh, many laws to protect uh, wildlife, in, uh, including raptors. But in uh, Malaysia, for raptors, uh, the wildlife laws are quite different in uh, Sabah, Sarawak, and uh, Peninsula. In Peninsula, uh, under the new Wildlife uh, Conservation Act, all raptors are totally protected. No hunting, no catching, nothing. Eh? Totally protected. But it's quite different in uh, East uh, Malaysia. In uh, Sarawak, uh, all raptors are protected. Protected and totally protected, uh, different. Protected, you can hunt with a license or, you know, for certain reasons. Uh, only two are totally protected. And these are the white bellied sea eagle and grey headed sea eagle. Uh, in Sabah, no raptors are totally protected. No raptors. So, um, all, in other words, uh, raptors can be hunted, can be trapped. And only 19 are protected. Uh, you, you, can, you, you can hunt them under license. And although uh, Malaysia is uh, signatory to many international wildlife laws, such as, you know, Ramsa, CITES, uh, CBD, you know, conservation on biodiversity. Uh, quite often, there's is it is it is only laws that are not proactively enforced or uh, improved. <clears throat> so, uh, in situ conservation. I uh, mean, conservation on site. Yeah? Uh, Malaysia, on the brighter side, we have a lot of our protected areas. System is uh, not bad. It covers uh, apparently 10.6% of the country. Uh, this is the, the recommended uh, uh, guideline, I think, by UN is 10% of, 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 of a country should be uh to be under the protect the protected areas uh, system uh so this uh, 10.6 percent uh protected areas provide uh, on-site uh protection for raptors the protectors the, the raptors there are protected uh, protected by virtue of them being there um 
And this uh, protected areas uh, system uh, not only covers uh, wildlife uh, sanctuaries and national parks such as uh, Salai and Tanjung Tuan, but also includes uh, areas such as uh, uh, forest reserves, yeah? forest reserves, parks, and so on. Uh, and uh, we and we know that uh, even uh, in uh, Malaysia, uh, permanent forest reserve doesn't mean that the that the reserve, the forest will be there forever. Uh, they can be degazetted, as we have seen many times. And uh, whatever is in there, whatever wildlife, including raptors, uh, will be will be uh, impacted. <clears throat> what about the uh, conservation initiatives? I mean, uh, other than the in, other than inside to uh, conservation and uh, you know laws uh, protecting raptors. What a, a, any proactive any uh, conservation initiatives? Uh, not much. Uh, the only one that I that uh, actively I think they all farm for you know selfish reasons because they they want the uh, the barn owl uh, to 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 uh, control the rats that are destroying the uh, farm nuts. Uh. The oil palm industry and the some rice field areas also put up uh, barn owl boxes. So as far as I know, it's only a. Uh, con uh, Concern, concerning only one type of owl, the barn owl. Uh, so uh, there are no uh, there are no programs. Uh, there are no programs dedicated to conservation of raptors. Uh, most of the uh, most of the initiatives are driven by environmental groups such as uh, MNS and. Uh, as we all know, we have been doing, as I, as I mentioned, we have been uh, uh, monitoring the migration of raptors at Tanjung Tuan for many years. And uh, we do uh, uh, public awareness by, do, uh, by, run, by running the Raptor Watch Week every year. Unfortunately, I think this year we will have to forego that. And the uh, Raptor Study Group of MNS has uh, done a few uh, individual studies on black eagle on the areas in uh, in Ulu Dada, and we have also worked with uh, international NGOs such as the ARCN, the Asian Raptor Research and Conservation Network, to uh, do migration uh, survey in Borneo and also in. Uh, in uh, Sumatra at Pulau Rupat. So, uh, in closing, I would just like to say that uh, uh, the future for raptors doesn't look uh, very bright, and uh, we have to look to more ways of uh, uh, increasing uh, activities on. Uh, conservation of raptors. So thank you for listening. My appreciation to the uh, friends uh, listed here who uh, loan the photos that, 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 that I use for the presentation. Now hand over to Ruti uh, for the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lim Kim Chai. Very informative. And I think it will be covered about 15 raptors. So um, the quiz is now open. Let me share. Uh, sorry, uh, Kim Chai, could you unshare the screen? Thank you. Oh, unshare. Yeah. And uh, stop sharing. Stop share. Stop sharing. Yep. Thank you. I uh, just want to show everybody where the quiz is located. Uh, basically, uh, as always, you have to go to the events itself. Everything is captured under the event and uh, click on the event and you can see the quiz is now live so you click on this particular quiz and uh, go ahead and complete the quiz 
we will give uh, equal points today. Uh, basically, I think the first three, each person will get 50 equal points. The equal points is part of the app uh, ranking system. And hopefully in the future, we can also convert it to some products and services. So if you look at the ranking here, okay, we can go to your My Office, click on ranking, and then you can see we have four ranks. So of course, we just started the app. So most everybody is in this particular uh, novice category. And um, more, uh, all activities we do on this app actually will be some, some points. So as you can see, Adrian is our current leader here. And it is, um, as what do you call that? Now I pass over to Adrian to take on the Q&A for Mr. Lim Kim Chai. Thank you, Adrian. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Lim. Good afternoon. So I'll be in charge uh, in the Q&A session. So for the thank first you. question from, yeah, from Maria, will you do the Raptors watching in Tanjung Tuan this year? So, the, was the, the uh, uh, question again? Do we do? Again. Um, will you do the Raptors watching in Tanjung? Uh, the largest Raptor in Malaysia, oh. is it? What was the question? No, no, Sorry. No. Um, how do you count the different species at Tanjung Tuan? Count the difference. Yeah, different species of raptors at Tanjung Tuan. Oh, at uh, Tanjung Tuan, uh, we usually have uh, two or three uh, people doing the count, and we will delegate one species to one person. So if there, if there's other like uh, oriental honey buzzard and black buzzard at the same time. So somebody will count oriental honey buzzard and that person count uh, black buzzard. So usually there's more than one person. Um, okay, thank you. And for the third question from Chang Wan Z. She said that she saw a lone OHB in housing area in PJ in November. So it, it, is it common for them to come in November? Uh, oriental honey buzzard uh, oh, yeah. arrive uh, during autumn migration in Malaysia from September onwards. So uh, yeah, it's, if you see a uh, oriental honey buzzard in uh, November, is possible because they start arriving, they start coming to Malaysia from September onwards. Okay, thank you, and. For next question from Ashwin, how do you tell the difference between the grey head headed fish eagle and the lesser fish eagle? Good, <laughs> good question, that one. Yeah. Uh, the grey the grey headed uh, fish eagle to me has got a bigger bill and it's got a longer neck than the uh, lesser fish eagle and the, the other the other way the, the, the other pointer is also the habitat uh, the lesser fish eagle prefer fast flowing uh, streams rivers whereas the gray headed uh, fish eagle they prefer lakes uh, big lakes or uh, reservoirs. So these are the in terms of in terms of the the area where they are seen. But uh, when in when in a flight, you can tell that the gray that the gray-headed fish eagle there's a black there's a, a black band black and white band on the tail. Uh, very clear, distinctive. 
uh, pen on the tail. Okay, thank you. Does that uh, answer the question? <laughs> Um, thanks a lot. And for next question from from MNS, what is the purpose of trapping raptors? Good question again. What is the purpose? Huh? The population trends. Uh, to find out whether the population is increasing, decreasing. If it is uh, decreasing, then it sounds like an uh, alarm. We should be quite. We should be quite. Uh, we should uh, find out why the population is uh, decreasing. So the main purpose is to uh, monitor the population trends, whether the trend is going down, whether there are less uh, less uh, uh, raptors or not. So that's the main purpose. Okay, thank you. And for the next question from Ashwi, is the Kinabalu surf surfing eagle is totally protected? Kinabalu. Yes. Can you hear me? I think it is. Uh, Sabah? Sabah? No. I think uh, totally protected as far as I know. Uh, only two. Uh, the white bellied sea eagle and the Grey-headed fish eagle. So the Kinabalu serpent eagle is not is not. Uh, uh, it's only uh, protected, not totally protected in uh, Sabah. <clears throat> okay, and for last but not least, this is an uh, endemic. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. <clears throat> and. Last question from Kartina Ami. What is the migratory route for the peregrine falcon? Peregrine falcon. Migratory? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, I think... Uh, I, do, I do raptor monitoring in typing. Uh, I do autumn uh, uh, monitoring in uh, Taipei, and I, and I and I do see uh, I do so. Uh, but where? But whether they use uh, the the inland route or, uh, overland, or do they use the oceanic route? But uh, peregrine falcons the thermals. Not, not like the oriental, not like the oriental honey buzzard. They can just fly over, over the sea. Yeah? So I think, uh, from, from the monitoring in uh, Thailand in uh, Chumpon, uh, they get the uh, peregrine falcon over there. So those uh, peregrine falcons must have come from uh, from uh, from uh, from inland. So I think peregrine falcons, because they can fly very well, they can use both routes, land route as well as uh, sea route. <clears throat> and there's another question from chat box. Yes. From Jared, what is uh, your recommendation for Raptors ID resources? I think is it uh, from books website. Yeah, there are nowadays with uh, internet, uh, there are so many uh, you know online uh, sources where you can look. Uh, you can look at uh, photos of uh, raptors in flight perch, you know. And there are also a lot of uh, forums about raptors. There's one, uh, there's one uh, Facebook group uh, started by Raptor Study Group. It's called Raptor Study Group Malaysia. That you can join to, uh, you know, to to talk about raptors, to look at the raptors, or you can post, you know, photos of raptors you can't uh, identify. 
to the group. So this uh, this this group uh, Facebook group is uh, is uh, administered by me and uh, some other uh, committee members of uh, Raptor group that you all can join to learn more about Raptors in uh, in Malaysia. Just uh, look for Raptor Study Group Malaysia on uh, Facebook. <clears throat> Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Lim. So that's all thank for Q&A session. I will pass to Mr. Witty for the next session. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Adrian. As always, very well done. And for a young guy, uh, very brave. Thank you so much. And as um, our presenter, Mr. Lim mentioned, uh, not much a lot of uh, uh, conservation work is, is being carried out. Uh, so we are giving you some uh, opportunities to help us uh, sponsor some programs. Uh, we have this, uh, if you look into the app, uh, Coffee for Birders. Uh, this one, uh, we are actually short of funds for the Raptor count for this year in 2021. Um, so if you like have a bit of spare cash, like 50 ringgit or 100 ringgit, maybe you can buy coffee for our birders. So this will go towards the um, the raptor counters, which we normally do uh, two weeks every year. Or sometimes, if there's there are more funds, we would do like one month. Uh, but uh, nowadays, due to the lack of funding, uh, we do two weeks. So you can click on this uh, coffee for birders, and then uh, you can. We have our bank account here, so if you can spare like fifty ringgit, then uh, bank in and give us the um, um, the receipt. And also, if you wish to join, this is also an opportunity for you um, to come and learn with all our experts. So when we have the actual uh, Raptor Count program, um, you can come uh, to learn from uh, Mr. Lim Kim Chai and other very uh, experienced uh, uh, birders. Okay, so this is one program. And the other program that we are launching is support the raptor conservation. As uh, Mr. Kim Chai mentioned, we need uh, to do more study. And in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to start a, a library of raptors in, in Malaysia. Uh, we are collecting the photos now. Um, so if you can donate to that, we will also, um, once we have the donation, we can uh, share the link to you. And of course, I'm, I'm still working on collecting the photos and making, uh, putting them onto this platform. All right. So uh, please help out on the Raptors. We really need a lot of support. All right. So let us go to the, the quiz. You can see the quiz actually yourself inside the app. And you can see the results here. Okay. So congratulations to Liu Yok Mui, uh, Liu Yok King. Uh, Sean Lam and Karina and Isri New. So these five people have um, completed 100%. So we will give you uh, 50 points each. All right, equal points. And uh, thank you so much to the rest of the participants. All very high points like Brian, um, Ashwin, uh, Arwin, Du Peng. All right. And Yen Yi also here. All right then. So that come, concludes this program. And thank you, uh, Mr. Lim Kim Chai, for making your time. So just thank to- Thank you. Thank you, everybody. To, uh, okay, just to wrap up. Uh, Woody, I, I, got a, I got a question questions for Kim Chai. Is it possible? Yes, go ahead, yeah. please, uh, Alan. Okay. Hey, Kim Chai, thanks very much for a great, nice talk. I was a bit late. Hey, Alan. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you speaking from uh, Ipoh now? No, uh, Taiping. Taiping. Oh, this is a big yeah. Taiping. Uh, well, you know, when we do your this uh, autumn count in Taiping, yes, you get a lot of Chinese sparrow hawks, yes, you get a lot of yeah. other, other raptors coming through. Are, yeah, they, are, I will, uh, sorry, go on. Are there plans to do any more autumn down, you know, the rest of the peninsula? Because what happened is. A lot of the raptors that you have counted in Taiping, we don't get it in Singapore in, in the same numbers. Mm. It, meaning that I think some mm. of the sparrowhawks 
cross over to Sumatra somewhere along maybe Port Dixon or, yes. or Moa or Johor. So all this jumping point, mm. uh, we really don't know where, they, where, where, where exactly they, they cross over. I mean, mm. for the spring one, you know, they come, come across the Tanjung Tuan, but going away to Indonesia, there isn't a specific area that you, you know, you know yeah. where they go to. So are they planning any more studies on, on that front? Uh, I think uh, just my thoughts. Lah. Uh, Chinese sparrow hawk, uh, I count here about 30,000, you know, 30,000 30, uh, around there every year. And I believe that they don't go to Singapore because Chinese sparrow hawks don't winter in, uh, in our area. They go straight away to Indonesia and end up in uh, Sulawesi or somewhere. So because of that, they 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 take the fast route like I think they cross over, I don't know Tanjung Tuan somewhere and just go straight to uh, Sumatra, Java, and so on. So uh, that's that is my my uh, thoughts lah. For autumn counts, uh, so far we have only counted in Taiping lah. There are uh, we don't have the resources or the good or the good location. More more important are the good location where to see autumn migration south of uh, Taiping. We haven't dis, uh, discovered a good location. I think uh, Tanjung Tuan, you may be able to see some, but I think MNS did do a, a brief uh, count uh, in autumn at Tanjung Tuan. Uh, but offhand, uh, I don't, I don't remember the numbers lah. But they, I think they, they did uh, check out Tanjung Tuan in autumn. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot more to, to learn lah during autumn and uh, and uh, spring migration too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because our our count for Chinese sparrow hawk, uh, this I don't don't know whether we can get a thousand thousand birds coming down so. Where's the other twenty nine thousand that disappeared? <laughs> After do, you, passing. Do, you all, do you all see a Chinese sparrow hawks wintering in uh, Singapore? Not many, right? The, they, they are there are one or two that or uh, two. hang around in our uh, town parks. Mm -hmm. uh, one famous ch Chinese sparrow hawk that always comes back to the I think Amokyo uh, mm -hmm. town park every year. Yeah. But there's one or maybe two somewhere else. We don't get really yeah. big numbers and those that fly across the numbers are not in in the same numbers that you have even for black buzzers or, or even i think most of most of the i mean we do get uh you know good good numbers of ohp but obviously not the same numbers that you get you know you're getting in uh, scott's hill and uh, over there so uh what about tanjung pi any tanjung any PI any old records over there as I said, uh, nobody, uh, nobody has gone to look. Uh, actually, I was, I was going to say that we need more uh, collaboration between Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. You know, Rupat there. You know, we, I mean, we just go one, one or two times, but there's no uh, continuation. Mm -hmm. So, like I say, uh, you know. But then, uh, what about the hill stations, uh, like you know? Fraser's Hill, Cameron Highlands, and uh, your, your the the one hill in, in Taiping. All these all these uh, high points. Any yeah, yeah, any yeah. any any signs of big, big uh, you know cattle going going down the the hill hilltops? No. Huh? Mm. Fraser's Hill and Genting Islands only uh, during uh, spring long. spring uh, migration. Okay. Autumn so far there's no big. There's no big flocks uh, uh, reported. Uh. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So, need, besides Scott Hill, you better look for another Chongpong somewhere in, uh, Malay in Malaysia somewhere. I'm sure somewhere they are they're passing passing through in big numbers, which, you know. Yeah. We have to... We, I think uh, what uh, this uh, Chairat is... Uh, no, what's, what's his name? Uh, Dr... Chayan is doing now, he has tagged the Black Bazaar, isn't it? So we should know like, where, where 
Vishru De Vishru Devat Devatik. Mm-hmm. Just take some black bazaars, I think. Something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, I I Hello. I know during the study of the four oriented budget, they they actually found a a hotel in uh, somewhere in in Johor. They rested yeah. over over there. I can't remember which part. I think Han, if if Han is on the on this chat on this uh, webinar, he 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 knows. And and then from then onwards, they they terminal and then fly across to Singapore. You know mm-hmm. that that's one of the study that they did on the four OHB that comes across to you know to Singapore so yeah I think the more study we have the the, the, the more understanding yeah. we have of how how the raptors come down Malaysia whether they come down east coast west coast central coast TC TT1 Sa range or whatever you know that that would be great at the moment we are still like uh, not not too sure but recently there was a study of a sparrow hawk as well uh, I'm not aware. Yeah, there was a there was a sparrowhawk two a year ago or two years ago where we find them wintering coming down the the east coast of Malaysia, the Mersing Mersing site, and oh. down down to Singapore. Anyway, this this is just uh, okay. something which uh, there's plenty plenty of us to do in China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you said, thanks so hey, much. Yeah, thank uh, you. Hey, Alan. Yeah. We just 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 to say that we are learning a lot uh, from your raptor report done by Gim Chong and you lah. Please send my regards to Gim Chong. Yes, Hold Gim Chong is doing a great job. Uh, yeah, very uh, very good. I when I I think after after the one in the Mongolia, we came back. Is it Mongolia Sapa? Were you in Sapa? Not Sapa. What's the other uh, one in no, uh, Tamdao? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, huh? come down. Yeah, yeah, I, think, I think Mike, Mike Chong got me to to thumb down, and after thumb down, we came back and started this uh, thing. But anyway, Kim Chong is now running the uh, Raptor Group in Singapore. Good, uh, good, He's doing good, a fantastic uh, job. Yeah, and we're getting you know good good uh, uh, information about the numbers and the species and all that. But anyway, there's a lot of uh, boat watchers in Singapore with you know all kinds of yeah. cameras and. They are the one who's, who's reporting all kinds of first stuff coming through. Yeah, come over to typing for another count. <laughs> <laughs> Can do. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All nice, right. Nice, nice chatting. Okay, thanks, thanks, Rudy. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Yes. Have a nice chat. No problem. You can continue. But anyway, thank you so much. And just to wrap up, uh, raptors are, are indicator birds for the for the environment itself. So we do, as Alan and uh, uh, Mr. Lim Kim Chai have, have exchanges now. A lot of more, a lot more work is needed. We don't know what's going. Really, really, really don't know what's going on. So we need to to continue the study. So hopefully, this this platform will will create more awareness and will churn out some new birders who may be keen on studying on raptors, like our maybe our our um, PhD students or master students can can take up this. Uh, challenge. All right. So, uh, can I yes. say something? Uh, yeah. Would be sure. uh, just to let just to let everyone know that MNS uh, Perak has got a uh, has got uh, uh, grant. Yeah. Has got a grant that uh, people can apply for to study birds as well as study raptors. Eh? Mm. So one one thing that people somebody can do is to find out whether the Raptors that are foraging in the rice fields are they being uh, are they being uh, impacted by you know pesticides or not you know so yeah any postgraduate or undergrad there interested uh, yeah check out the grant that is offered by MNS Perak branch called the Tan Kenchong Bird Memorial Fund all right thank you. Okay, thanks. That, that's good. Yeah, so I think we do have some masters or, or, or PhD students here as well. So if you guys are keen, uh, can always PM me uh, and then I'll get you more information on that. Okay, so on that note, uh, congratulations to all our quiz uh, winners. Uh, we'll be giving, uh, I'll be adding your points into the, um, the system. And thank you, Mr. Lim Kim Chai, for sharing your knowledge. And thank I'll, you.
our volunteers, uh, Adrian and uh, Arisa. Thank you so much for looking at the looking after the, the Q and A session. All right. So the next session is on the twentieth of February. Um, we're going to Johor, uh, Negeri, and Malacca to look at uh, what are the birds that we can see in that area. All right. So until then, and um, we'll see you again. Stay safe. I know it's uh, COVID is having a, a wrecking hay haywalk everywhere, but as long as we stay home. You know, we try to minimize this uh, situation. All right. So again, thank you, and we we'll look. I look forward to seeing you again um, in two weeks' time. Take care for now. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Arisa. Take care. Thank you, Voti and Mr. Lim. Hi, Sean. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You too. Thank All you. Right. Bye for now.